Hello and welcome to this uh, new t new video in our uh, React Hook Forum tutorial. We are closing to the uh, to the end of this tutorial today. I'm going to be discussing how to to validate uh, with React Hook Form using a special validation package like Yubzo, Joey, Subtract, Fist, and even your custom resolver. <coughs> okay, so to have this working, we are going to install a, sp a special package that React Hook Form team provides for us. It's called Hook Form Resolvers. It's integrated with React Hook Form, and it's enabling. It's a package that enables you to use these special packages within the React Hook Form validation, so that your validation works in the real time as you were using, as if you are using React Hook Form register regular register validation. Okay, let's see how we are going to do this. First of all, I'm not going to run this command. I'm going to run uh, an older version of the hook form resolvers because the new version is causes an error. I'm not sure what's the reason. I have gone into the GitHub issues and uh, in the GitHub issues comments, the React hook form team says that this version, uh, the V200 beta 3, is the stable version. I'm going to click this and copy it. I think you know you all know how to get the version, or just you can uh, type it like. I'm um, sorry, okay. Copy it from here and right here, right click, and yeah. <coughs> it's the same, you're just gonna add uh, an add and this version. Now, I'm not gonna click enter, I'm gonna click space and type the word yep and the word joy because we are going to need these and click enter and they will be installed. Of course, I'm not going to do this because I already had it installed, but for you, you click enter, install it, wait for it to install, and then follow along with me. Okay, <coughs> so right here. I'm going to, this is the form as we had it before with everything we had. I am going to be using it, uh, diff okay, sorry, yeah. Okay, anyhow, <coughs> I'm going to be using it as we were using it before. So here is the form uh, that we were working on. I guess it looks like a register form more than a contact form, but this is not the topic right now. Because even I have a register handler. All right, so right here, we are going to, in our details function, we are going to create a YUP schema. And if you haven't worked with YUP before, it goes like this. You import, you can import differently, but I'm going to import it all as YUP from YUP like this. And just I'm going to be like, uh, yeah, const, I'm going to export this. So export const YUP schema is going to equal yup dot object to shape and inside of this uh, you open an object again and inside of this object you enter your own schema now the schema is an object so the object has two uh, things a key and the property the key is the same name of your input that it's similar to what we had with register but right here we enter the name right here that's why the name is very important to have uh, in the input you can also have it like this register and the name and like this you can now clear this and you can clear all of this because we won't need it and I think it's gonna work so you can either have it a ref register with username or we can have it like this we're gonna try it like this and see if it's gonna work or can I give us an error yeah I think I had uh, one more two more okay yeah uh, okay so these are as well need to be commented so yeah I'm gonna delete all of this, but just for now, I'm just gonna comment it out. Okay, right here, the username is going to be, uh, yeah, this is how it works with yup. You're gonna say yup dot string. This is the type of the uh, input dot required because it's required, and you're gonna be like, uh, please enter your name. Now, let's go and refer back to our, uh, let me see, okay, let's refer back to our validation. Of the username, we had a required, we had a min length, and we had this asynchronous validation. For now, I'm not gonna do the asynchronous validation, I'm gonna go back to it later. I just want to show you how to connect it with the app. So, I'm gonna work with this because I need a bigger space. Okay, so this is how it is. Now, you have to add uh, now with the app, there is no max length and min length, there is max and min, and the max is. Uh, yeah, it's min, not max. No, it's max, actually, sorry. Now, we put the value. It's like a function with two parameters. The first parameter is the value or the limit. The second parameter is the message or function. And we're going to just put a string of our message. 
uh, username should be list and six characters. I mean six characters is a little bit too little, so let's make it eight for max. And man, I'm just gonna like yeah, you can click enter and just have them one behind under uh, another like this. But don't forget to add a dot between one another. Now that I'm gonna copy it and make it min and the two maybe three okay two is good uh, it shouldn't should be longer okay right now um what do you think will happen let's go this is our application now I think yeah as you can see there is no default value for this username now if I submit it should submit. Or should give me an error. What do you think would happen? Okay, let's try and see. Yeah, here you go. It submits and it gives the default value that was given to the object in the function, but it's not given this right here. So what if I delete this default value? Like, let's go to default values, and I'm not gonna delete it totally. I'm just gonna comment it out like this. Now, what will it do? Will it give me a username? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna lose the page. And yeah, undefined. As you can see, it's given me undefined. I think it gives me undefined because right here uh, I have this uh, register. So yeah, it knows there is an input with name, so this input should have a value. Now it doesn't have a value. You know why? Because it's not connected. This is, you know why it didn't give us the validation? Because it's not connected. So let me just type a word. Now I'm gonna type uh, a word that is uh, longer than, less than two, so one character. And it's given undefined. Wow, this is weird. Okay. Let's go back to our uh, older uh, setup. So ref equal register like this. Okay. So one two characters and there you go. One character and there you go. Now no characters and it's an empty string. You know why this happened? Okay, I'll tell you why. Because uh, this line right here is for version seven. I think it's supposed to work with the version 6 we're using, but uh, I don't know why it didn't work. This uh, setup right here is for the version 6 we're using. So I guess I'll leave this commented out so you would know how to use it with version 6, with, ver with the new version. It's the same, you just add this like this, and your errors are going to go in the second parameter of the register function as an object like this, right here, uh, just like the regular one. So I guess you know now how you do it. I'm gonna just be like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna require is uh, instead of true please enter a user name and just comment these out so I'm gonna leave this for you now I'm gonna take this away now one thing is remaining is to connect it so why is this not working why it's not validating the username because the act hoc form has no idea that we are using this yep schema right here we just exported it we didn't import it we didn't use it so right here I'm gonna import it so I am going to import yeah, yep, scheme, yeah, sorry, yep, schema from okay, util slash yep, schema. Okay, great. Now, how do we use it? I guess you guessed it. So using the resolver that we have talked about before. Now, if you add this like this, yep, schema resolver, it's not gonna work. Uh, right here, you're gonna see it's gonna give us an error in one second. Yes, exactly. Now, if I type this and submit, yeah, as you can see, this is not how you do it with the resolver. Now, how do you do it? This is where uh, the package we added uh, recently, hook resolvers, hook form resolvers, come into play. We are going to import something from it, and I would like you to pay attention to this because it's a little bit tricky. It's not that much once you know it, you get to reach it. So usually you just import the package, you click on here and it gives you something, but with uh, React, with the hook form resolver, it doesn't work like this. You're going to add another slash and look for the package you're going to be using. For me, I'm going to be using, as you can see, there's Joey, there's this, there's Yop, and there's Zod. For me, I'm going to be using Yop, so I'm going to be choosing Yop. And click Control Space, and yeah, as you can see, there's the Yop resolver, this is the one we need. Now, how do we use this? I'm going to be wrapping the Yop schema with two parentheses. And wrapping it around it with the resolver, it's like uh, using a, a high order component, but some sort of a high order resolver, high order function. So yeah. Okay, 
Now let's refresh our page. Now if I submit, yeah, as you can see, I'm gonna enter my name. Now if I enter my name and declare my age, what do you think will happen? So yeah, okay, so yeah, it's gonna print the age even though this age is not valid. You know why? Because now once you add this resolver, all other validations uh, and validate and in, re in the register are omitted. omitted. The only two things that are not omitted is the value as number, value as date, and the set value as. These three things are not omitted. Anything else is. So uh, the min is, is ignored, the validate is ignored. So how do we do it? We do it in our schema. So as you can see, this is an object. So after each comma, you're gonna add the new input name and your uh, validation schema is like the other one. So the age is yup dot number and dot required please enter your age and dot min now with number min and max are values like uh, the minimum is 2 3 5 16 not the length of the type of the string I, 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 unlike the string so we use min and max with the number with the string and we are going to use it with the date but it means a different thing in terms of uh, the type that we are validating again is which is string number or date. So, right here the minimum was 13. Uh, user should be older than 13 years old. Now, should we add a max? Let's see. On our validation right here, we didn't have a max. We had a max as of this. And we want to do it with a function. We didn't do it with the username as well, so let's validate the age and come back and do it for both of them. One of them is asynchronous, the other is not asynchronous, and it's a little bit different. You will enjoy it, I hope. Okay, so I'm gonna save. Now I'm going to delete this because it's just meaningless. I mean, not meaningless, but it's just not needed. I'm sorry. Okay. I just don't want you to be confused. And yeah, it's meaningless in terms of JavaScript. JavaScript will not uh, will omit it, so it's just not uh, useful for our code right now. Okay, now I'm gonna get back to my default value of the of the username. Just save some time. Now, actually, actually, the default value is an error. Like if I put right here and leave, yeah, because it's longer than six characters. So these are three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven character. So I'm gonna add that the maximum should be maybe twelve characters for username. I think twenty would be great, like just to be realistic. And just make sure that this is 20 as well. The, the message is uh, consistent with uh, the data or the rule we are having. Okay, so now this is valid. Now let's enter an age that's less than 13. Yeah, this is coming from the fact that you set it to type number. This is a default message coming from Yup itself. You can ignore it or you can look into how you change it. I'm just gonna ignore it for now. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, 13 is our maximum, so 12 is no, so 13 is yes. Now, you wanted to say when the 26, maybe 60, you want to say when 60 is that this is the age of retirement. And you wanted to say when a user is not coming from you, the API, matching the user coming from the API, that this is a wrong name. So, how do we do this? I'm going to do it with uh, the regular one first. So, you use something coming from Yep called test. Now what this now what this takes are three different parameters. The first one is the name of the function we're doing, and it's string, not a, f not a function because we're not use a function. Uh, so you can type anything you want, but type a meaningful name like name in your variables. I'm gonna just be like uh, retirement age checking. You can also have spaces between this since it's just a string, but I prefer to be consistent and. Now, right here, you're going to be typing the error message, and yes, the error message is going to come before the third parameter, which is the checking, the real checking of uh, this uh, test, or this rule. So, right here is the age uh, retirement. This user is eligible for... Okay, eligible is been wrong, I think eligible like this, yes, okay. Retirement, I hate typos. Third one is the function. Now, we, right here, you can have an asynchronous function and an asynchronous function. But in this uh, age validation, we don't need an asynchronous one, so we are going to use the synchronous validation. 
So, it's a, so let me just like have a space between each one like this because I want to show you, okay? So right here it's a function like this. It's a function that takes two parameters. One is the quinticus, the other is the value. I think that uh, the order is very important. And right here an R function and you just you just put the condition you want to put a function. So uh, right here what we want is to make sure that the value is less than 60. So if the value is greater than 60, uh, is this user is eligible for retirement. I guess and if it's equal to 60 so let's see so this is the correct answer and unless this condition matches it's gonna give us an error so right here I'm gonna reload the page and right here I'm gonna type uh, 80 years old and yeah great so 60 years old great now 95 and there you go it's not eligible for it okay now uh, something is wrong 25 is eligible for retirement, 60 is eligible for retirement. Okay, something is very much wrong. Okay, I guess what's what's wrong is that I used this wrong. I told you that the order is very important and I missed it up. I think the value comes first, the context comes later. Now let's reload this page. Now let's make sure it's 60 and leave and 60 is eligible, 50, 95 is not. So it's working now, great, 60, 61. Okay, so I guess you understand the points, 13, uh, 12, oh no, 12, and leave, and okay, uh, 13, and leave, and 1, 1, 12, like this, and yeah. Okay, so I guess now you see the point, let's just make it 25, for example. Now, let's validate this name according to the API. Let's see, right here we had, uh, okay, yeah, my bad. So right here we had an API the username I'm just gonna copy this whole function I am gonna comment it and I'm gonna cut it okay now I'm gonna delete all of this no no not this part just this part now as you realize it's just uh, context and value and your function right away you don't you, you see how it works okay right here I'm gonna make a test and I'm gonna be check API username the message wrong username and the function let's have our space again just to give ourselves space to see what we are doing now it's a value first context second and right here I'm going to open the parentheses use this and now I don't need this because it's already there so this is that so let's see how will this go. This is supposed to give us a wrong username right off the bat. Okay, I have an error somehow somewhere. Let me check. Okay. Yes, I guess because of this, because this is different now. The place of the function is different, so I just need to take the comma out. Okay, now uh, once I leave this, I should see in the console. Yeah, as you can see, this is the right username. Once I leave this input, now I should get the wrong username. Okay, I'm not getting the message. Will it submit? No, it does not. So it's working, but it's not giving us our message. So something is wrong. Now, what if we take this and take this away and just leave it like this? Now we are going to have to take this away. Save. Now, yeah, okay, so um, I think this function right here is a parenthesis, a parenthesis function. Maybe if we try to use them again, like let me go back, yeah. Okay, right here, these parenthesis function are not working right. Uh, so, what if we say return? Now, let me reload the page. Now, yeah, as you can see, so it's either you've had the return with this parenthesis function or you take the parenthesis away. And you take the turn on. So I'm gonna leave it like this because this looks cleaner to me. Okay, now if I type this Lenigram thing and just as a valid and submit is submitted. Great. So I'm gonna put it in my default values right here. Instead of the deluxe feast pizza. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now this is working right. So let's get into the dates. I think now you see how do we use the test to validate something that's more complicated with that needs a function 
something that seems similar to the validate function we had. Okay, now this is our validate. This is validate. This is validate. Now, if you can take a look and uh, into this, and you see if we submit now, the age is 25. It's a number because of uh, this one. The value as a number. I think this set value as is not working or something's wrong. So I'm gonna take it. Yeah, it's ignored because the value of the number is here. I have it right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it. I'm not gonna take it away. I'm gonna keep it, and I'm just gonna have this. Uh, yeah. Okay. I did it only once. Of validation, this is not needed anymore. So I guess this is just that. This is all we need. Okay. So moving to the date now. The date is just validated in the future. So we are going to validate this. Like the name is date. So we are going to say date is yup the date yes it's just like this now dot min now right here in the minimum date i want to make sure that it gets a dynamic value which is tomorrow we did it right here we did it to get the tomorrow value the default value so we are going to do the same thing it returns tomorrow right so i'm gonna export it i already exported it right here i'm just gonna call it so i'm going to pay like get tomorrow it's a function now i'm gonna click like this to import it so import it right here right now and the message and let's just copy our message from here events cannot be from the past now let me delete this i don't need it just delete it all at once okay save and i don't need this i don't need this as well value as this is the only thing we need we don't need required okay great let me see if the age is yes. Okay, so everything is now cleaner. It looks a little bit a lot more, a lot better to be honest. So now let's see if the date is going to be validated. So right now if I choose a date from the past, like yesterday maybe, and leave, it's not giving me anything. Okay, so I'm gonna reload the page. Because some stick have fallen in a lot. And yeah, it's working well. Now if I take today should give me the same error now if i take tomorrow yeah as you say okay great looks a lot better more cleaner and easier to do now the phone is a yacht number and the phone got a pattern now the pattern you can use the phone pattern like uh like this you use this thing called matches and now it's not a number the phone is not a number <laughs> sorry the phone is a string and only the string get matches because if you add a number, number doesn't have the matches inside of it actually. Now matches the function that takes two parameters. One of them is the regex pattern you're gonna be using, and the other one is a message which is invalid phone number. Right here. Now the regex pattern is the phone pattern, as you can see, I'm importing it from the helpers, and this is more much more cleaner to me. Dot required because it's required and please enter your phone number now what if I don't want it to be required like let's just see if it's working first of all and then we are going to get back to it so right here this is required so if I leave it's going to give us a valid phone number because the pattern runs first the pattern is going to be uh, I already know yeah sorry this is gonna give us an error yes okay I think it's still gonna give us invalid phone number and there's a way to handle it there's a way to handle it so that it ignores uh, required and so is this, if it's not yes now it's required because requires run first so this is good now if I type name yes invalid phone number now what if I don't want it to be required with pattern comes two ways of doing it you can put the, the message right this or you can cut it now and have an object the object contains two values the message and this is what we had and one more thing and if you click it's yeah exclude empty string now right here i'm gonna be it's a boolean so i'm gonna tell it true now because this is required it's gonna give us an error but if we take this comment this out for now now i'm gonna load the page clear this leave and no error submit is gonna submit and yes it submitted the phone number is an empty string but we want it to be required, so we're going to keep it like this, and we are going to keep this like this, regardless, because it's going to be required. 
so if it's an empty string I'm gonna lose a page again now empty is a string and uh, yes okay so yeah because it's required it's gonna ask you to enter your phone number and it's not gonna submit now the email is uh, I think similar so I will encourage you before I do this to go and do it on your own pause the video do it on your own and then uh, compare to my answer I will be moving on to do it right now so email is going to be yep the string as well now uh, yeah you gonna be doing it like this I suppose and now call for the email pattern and be like in valley email and one more thing is um, required and please enter your email now this is going to just have to be behind this not, after, not before so like this because I don't want to do this because I'm going to be deleting this right now as you can see if I take this away, oh sorry, if I just take this to come away and leave, you can see it's invalid email. Now there is a better way of doing this. It's for email, not for phone, but it's a better way. So you have a thing called email already. It's a function given to us, but by up in the string uh, type of uh, validation. Right here, you just leave it like this and save, and it's gonna give you a message by default. Actually, I think if I delete this dot com now, leave. And yeah, email must be a valid email. Now this one email here is the name of the input. How does it know about it? I will show you right now. I'm going to be opening a string. Yeah. Okay. So like this dollar sign inside a regular string, not a back tips string. It's weird, I know, but something coming from yup. Now the pass is uh, what we are using as is valid. Okay. Is not valid. Let's have a better message, like, oh sorry, let's, uh, like, please, enter, a uh, valid, and pass. Now, this supposedly should give us a valid email, not a valid pass, so I'm gonna reload the page, take this one away, and leave, and yes, here you go, as you can see, it's working fine, you can use this, and you can use another one, so, and instead of the min and the max, you can have something called lens but lens means that it shouldn't be less and it shouldn't be more it's gonna be lens lens is going to be 10 so 10 characters and the message is going to be like this dollar sign pass is should be for example dollar sign again lens characters i want to show you this i'm going to be commenting it out after we try it <coughs> so now I'm gonna leave and yeah username should be 10 so as you can see it prints and the value you give it right here so I'm gonna comment this out because we don't want it to be like this but it's worth noting it out uh, okay so now it's back to our regular validation now what remains for us is the password and confirm password okay, so now password is going to be yup dot string as well Required. Please enter your password. Dot min. As a min is a min lens, and the minimum is six. And passwords should be longer than six characters. Now I'm going to just copy this and make it for the same for the confirm password. So okay, yeah. Just save because they yeah like this. Now confirm, uh, yeah, confirm, password is going to be the same thing, so I'm just going to copy this all. Now the only thing remaining for us is, uh, yeah, sorry, I should have the word up right here, is to make sure that these two passwords matching, like, let, show, let me show you. Now I'm going to be deleting all of this because uh, it's omitted by default, actually. So I'm going to just be having the word register, like this. And the word register like this. I'm just gonna take all this away. Uh, or register just like this. Let me see. Yes. Okay. So register. Now in the date, I'm gonna leave the value as date true, and then the confirm password. And the password is just going to be this value. And right here. Yeah, I'm gonna leave this for now because I want you to remember this. But I'm gonna take all this away. Now I 
By default, this is not working now because uh, React hook form is omitted any validation inside the register as we have a validation resolver working for us. So right now, if I validate, because this is valid, it's gonna be submitting this. And yeah, this is an error. I don't really know why. Yeah, as you can see, uh, the values are still there after validating. Even if I uh, let me change now, because it's gonna go back to the default. So 23, yes, it's 23 and 25. Okay, now if I just, these are two valid passwords. They are not matching, but valid. And yes, it's gonna print. And one of them is one to eight and one to six. So now, as you can see, if I take a couple characters and leave, yeah, and take a couple characters and leave. Yeah, maybe empty it and leave. Yes, so you can't see the validation is working, but they are, don't have any idea that they are should be matching. Now we can do it with test, but I'm going to be showing you another way of doing it. You're going to be saying to type off. Now it's a little bit tricky, but it, I guess it's simpler than test. So how do we do it? You call something called one off. It's a function given to the string types of yup. Now right here, one off is the, fu uh, the function that takes two parameter. One of them is the second one is the message. Passwords don't match. The second one is a little bit tricky because you're gonna to enter an array. Inside this array, you say yup the triff, and you give it the name of the input you want to compare to. So we want to compare it to the password. Now I want to compare them to one another. Like um, if one doesn't match, the other doesn't match, you know? Because if you leave it like this, if you change the password, it will not give you this message. But when you submit, this will give you this message. Now I wanted to give us the message in both ways. So I'm gonna copy this line like this and just paste it right here and take this away. Okay, now <coughs> let's see how this will work haven't tried it before to be honest with uh, both of them in the open play now I'm going to reload the page <coughs> now right here passwords do match so I'm going to take this away and okay it's not giving us error it's giving us error here but it's not giving us error there so this is not right oh yeah because I'm comparing it to the same thing so I'm gonna be just like changing this to confirm password now sorry my bad reload the page again <coughs> now I'm gonna leave one character leave and yeah, there you go. So I guess this is a little bit better. If you, it's up to your preference. If you want to leave it uh, only at one of them is gonna be working. Like, let me show you. If I comment this out, it will be working, but it will only tell us. Oh yeah, okay. So okay. So if I leave this out, it's going to only work with submit. And okay. So if I change right here, it's going to work. It's going to tell us. Now if I change right here and leave, it's not gonna know only gonna know they do match when I submit so I understand my point now if I change one right here it's not gonna tell us anything now if I click submit it's going to tell us so I, to avoid this to avoid the wait the need to wait for submit I rather to do but uh, I prefer to put it uh, like this <coughs> so I'm gonna leave it like this and you do it as you prefer so I guess now we can delete this validate part right here uh, as well we only need the word register to just tell React hook form that this uh, input is registered to its, uh, I don't know, to its hook use form. So now we have a whole a fully functional validated form working using React hook form and the yup schema. It looks much more cleaner. The schema is in a separate file like this. And this form looks a lot cleaner, I guess. I will leave this commented for you to know how to use it with the new version version 7 way of registering oh, okay I'm typing it wrong I really need to take some typing lessons input elements components you know okay that's it so I'm going to be uh, that's it for today next video we are going to be discussing how to validate using joy instead of yub and I will be pushing this to a separate uh, branch on Git called the Up and Joy so that you can check it without being confused. The final result is going to be left as it was with the regular validation. Uh, okay, that's it. I hope you had fun and see you next video. Goodbye.